what most worries me are those cases where clearly good people who are not necessarily captured by tribalism, per se, uh, are doing the unthinkable based purely on religious doctrines that they believe wholeheartedly with, without good evidence. So you have the person who joins ISIS who, who wasn't even Muslim before they converted you know, 16 months ago, and they go all the way down the rabbit hole to the, the most doctrinaire, most committed, most uncompromising view of just how you have to live in this world if you're going to be Muslim. Uh, and they join ISIS based on the idea that salvation only goes one way and that dying in defense of the one true faith is the, the best thing that can happen to you. There's no question that there are individuals who have made that journey. In fact, there are individuals by the thousands who have made that journey. And there are far more benign versions of that. There are people who just waste their lives, I would argue, converting to whatever the belief system is and just wasting a lot of time worrying about hell or worrying about the fact that their child is gay and the, the, you know, the creator of the universe doesn't approve of that. Uh, and so there are all, all kinds of suffering that strike me as truly unnecessary, born not of, again, ape-like urges, but ideas that any rational person would, if believed, would, fo would follow to the, that same terminus. I mean, the, the, the thing is, if you, buy, if you buy the fact, again, to take Islam as, as a current example, if you buy the claim that the Quran is the perfect word of the creator of the universe, never to be superseded by anything humanity does now or a thousand years from now, that commits a rational per that then then the exercise of human reason is bounded mm -hmm. by this i would argue pathological frame which leads to certain outcomes that okay. should really worry us okay so so let's take that claim apart for a minute because that's not your claim specifically the, the claim that you were describing see because that's that's really not the claim that religious fundamentalists make the claim they make is worse than that because they claim that the Quran, say, or, or the Bible for that matter, is the literal word of God. But more than that, they claim that their understanding of that word is correct, which yeah. means they conflate two things. Like, because you could imagine a situation where you had a book, and I'm not saying this is the case, it's, it's an imaginative exercise, where you had a book that had all the answers, that was extraordinarily complicated, and so that when you read it, it wouldn't be obvious that you understood it. Or perhaps it wouldn't be mm -hmm. obvious that you didn't understand it either, but you're not going to be able to, you can't get an uninterpreted version of the book. And so the fundamentalist claim is far worse. It's that not only is there an absolute reality, truth, embedded in the book, yeah. but that their particular take on that absolute reality is the absolute take on that book. Yeah. And so they conflate their own, they, they, they make an assumption of their own omniscience and then pass that off Onto God, so yeah, to speak. except in their defense, and I don't often rise to the defense of <laughs> fundamentalists. Uh, it's it's very easy to get there because some of the the claims in the book are not at all hard to parse. In fact, so many of them can only be honestly interpreted one way. So, to take again an example that will be not inflammatory uh, to you, but uh, makes the point. It just says that the, the remedy for theft in the Quran is to cut the, the hands off a thief. I mean, you, 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 that, that is the unambiguous injunction. It's not an allegory. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, so, so the you have to you have to in, right. indulge some kind of tortured uh, interpretive scheme to avoid the. The, the shocking fact that the creator of the universe w thinks you should live this way for, for all time. And people like ISIS, I mean, the, the, I mean this is my claim. It's just, it, the, this, most of what is in these books, and this is what worries me about those books because they, they can't be edited, uh, most of what's in the books is clearly not the best that humanity is capable of in the ethical domain. Or in the... No. So, and, and so, and so clearly, and this is true for morality, you know, most pressingly, but it's true for science, it's true for economics, it's true for anything else that we, we uh, are wise to pay attention to. Uh, 
it's like slavery is condoned in the Bible, in both Testaments, and in the Quran. There's no getting away from that. Now you can say, well, it's not the central thrust of any of these books, but if you, if you go to the books and try to figure out what the creator of the universe wants with respect to the owning and needless immiseration of other people, right? He expects you to keep slaves and he's told you how to do it. You know, don't knock out their eyes and their teeth. Uh, uh, don't take, if you're a Muslim, don't take other Muslims as slaves. But it's not an accident that the people who joined ISIS thought that it was absolutely kosher to take slaves to take sex slaves, and uh, I mean, they were even, they, it, their, their use of their sex slaves was conducted as a sacrament, and that's not an accident. I mean, they, they were okay. praying over their, the, the, the Yazidi girls before they raped them. So this, this is not, unlike the, what many people expect, it's not that this doctrine is being used as a pretext for people who would otherwise do terrible things like take sex slaves and rape them. Uh, and so there's no net damage being done here by this belief system. No, these are, I would argue in many cases, psychologically normal people who are simply convinced of the absolute veracity of these ideas. And, and in, the, in this case, the, the perfect example of Muhammad as the, the, the most self-actualized human who's ever existed. And you know, what did Muhammad do? Muhammad took sex slaves. Uh, so you know, he, and he's a, and then then once you, once you grant that, and this is, I mean, this is where you, there's a, there's a tension between you know how we pursue the same goals, like you know as we've just established, we have many of the same goals, but insofar as you make religion look palatable, insofar as you suggest to your audience that they can they can have their religious cake and eat it too, they can they can have their reason. They can have their respect for science. They can have a 21st century worldview, but they can also hold on to everything they love in Christianity or fear to lose. And it's, it's undoubtedly mostly Christianity, but, but whatever, any religion. My concern is that it keeps us shackled to these Iron Age philosophies and these Iron Age conversations where we should be having a 21st century conversation about everything. Ethics included. Okay, okay, so...